Okay, um, sometimes in your genealogy you'll find a place that you just cannot find on a map in any of your software. Well, I had a similar experience with this. I knew it was in Grand County, Utah, but just could not find it anywhere. So, I'm going to give you a few sites that will be helpful. Uh, let's first start out with Goldbug. Uh, their software, a little bit pricey, but it does have one free feature. Is it Site Find Online? And we know the place was Richardson, and we knew it was in Utah. And you can choose what type of place you're looking for. And then here you got plot on Google Maps. I don't care for it. There's list in a table, which I use most of the time. But you can also get it to show it as both. So let's click uh, search site finder. We get one hit, and it's in Grand, Grand County like it should be, and it even shows you where the place is. And you get your, let's zoom out a little bit, Now, I knew it was along the Colorado River, and uh, this map is just uh, streets, satellite is pictures, hybrid is a combination of both, and terrain is like a topographical map. Here you see elevation markers. Uh, not as nice as a real topograph, topographic map. Okay, well, let's uh, move on to the next place. It is uh, called geonames.usgs.gov. And let's go over here to domestic names. And we want search. And let's try Richardson again. You know it was in Utah. We got featured classes and for what you're looking for. So let's go ahead and click search. And we get actually several different choices. I later found out this Richardson became Richardson Amphitheater. So let's click on Richardson. And here we get the topographical map name, uh, longitude and latitude. And uh, I really like this uh, GNIS, Google Maps. It gives you more of a realistic topographical map. Okay, it plotted it. And we can click Topo. This is one uh, advantage of GeoNames. Zoom in. Okay. 
Yeah, the only disadvantage to this is the, uh, it's hard to find uh, township and range lines if you're trying to plot a piece of ground. But it's going to get you in the ballpark. And if you zoom in far enough, you'll actually see the sections start to appear. As you can see, 21, 22, and other than that, it just works like regular Google Maps. I would still recommend you go to Library Map and download your uh, topographical maps from them. It's very high quality. And let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, we found out it was Fish Tower. And this would be the topographical map we want. Okay, let's uh, say, for instance, you found the place you was looking for, but maybe the county boundaries have changed. I have you, I own Annie map, has saved me some time. But there's other ways to get around it. Uh, here in Heritage Quest has a very nice feature in the census area. Now what I want is this browse feature. You pick the census year. I know there's been a lot of boundary changes in Utah since 1850. And over here you'll see a view state map. Very, very useful. Now, here we see in black what it used to be, and in white is current boundaries. And over here, we can see the same thing. In black is the boundaries for 1851. And in white, the current county boundaries. So, you can kind of guess where it is on the map, and maybe know what county it was in at the time the event happened. So, hope you'll give that a try. There's also something very useful. Just go to US Gen Web. It's free, easy to use. And try the index, maybe try the state map. But here you see the county, county seat, when the county was formed, the county it was formed out of. So there's a couple of little clues on how to find a uh, places in the correct uh, county for the time it happened. So, like always, enjoy.